Welcome to my series of videos on mathematics for economists. In this video, I'm going to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of yet another example matrix. This one is given by the rows 0, minus 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3. And as we're going to see, this is a matrix with complex eigenvalues. And I also want to have an example of those. So let's go ahead and calculate the eigenvalues as the roots of the characteristic polynomial uh, minus lambda minus 1, 2, 1 minus lambda 0, 0, 0, 3 minus lambda. Again, the third row here has only one non-zero entry, 3 minus lambda. So I'm going to expand along the third row and I get, I remember the, the sign convention plus minus plus. Right? So I get 3 minus lambda times the determinant of the submatrix that results from de deleting the third row and the third column. And um, this, is the, uh, this is the number minus lambda times minus lambda, that would be lambda squared. Minus 1 times minus 1, that would be plus 1. Okay. So I need to have the roots of, of these two factors here. Um, well, clearly uh, the root here is lambda equal to 3, and the roots here, uh, lambda 2 plus 1 equal to 0, means that lambda squared is equal to minus 1, and that has the two complex solutions, plus and minus, the complex unit i. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, and call our first eigenvalue i, and we can now find the corresponding eigenvectors in exactly the same fashion as we've done before. So we're solving the system of equations m4 minus i times the identity times the, an unknown vector we're now going to determine equals the zero vector in R3. And we can also solve this uh, in, in our usual scheme. Yeah? So we have uh, uh, we subtract i on the main diagonal of the of the matrix under study here. Uh, this gives us the second row one minus i zero 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 three minus i, and I want to have zeros on the right hand side. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply the first row by the complex unit because this gives me a 1 in the first entry, right? Because i squared is minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. So I get 1. Obviously here I get minus 1 times i. This is minus the imaginary unit. And here I get 2i. And I have 0 on the right hand side. Okay. Uh, let me just write everything out. Step by step. Okay, so now uh, uh, I can um, I can subtract the first row from the second. This is going to give me well the first row acts as the pivot, so there's nothing changing here. Um, this of course is going to annihilate these two entries here and I get a zero minus two i is minus two i zero 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 three minus i haven't done anything in the third row okay so far so good now I can of course go ahead and again add the second row to the first um, this is going to give me one minus i and zero to zero plus two i minus two i um, this second row now act as the pivot and I can actually go right ahead and multiply by one half times the imaginary unit. What is that going to give me? Well, I have zero, zero here, but then I have minus two i times one half i. And this is 
minus 1, 2 times a half, um, minus 1 times i square, i square is minus 1, so minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. 0 on the right hand side. And on the on the third row, on the third row I can multiply with 3 plus i divided by 10. What's that going to give me? Well, 0, 0 obviously in the first two entries. And then I have 3 minus i times 3 plus i divided by 10. This is 9 minus 3i plus 3i minus i times plus i. This is minus i square. i square is minus 1, so this is plus 1 divided by 10. We see this is 1. Right? Well, in other words, the inverse of a complex number a plus b i um, is a minus b i, which is the complex conjugate, divided by the norm of a plus b i squared, which is a squared plus b squared by good old Pythagoras. Um, and a squared plus b squared here is uh, a 3 squared plus 1 squared, so that's 10, so that's where, where, where this 10 was coming from, okay? Good. So what do we see? Um, we see that the second and the third row both tell us that x3 is equal to 0, and the first row tells us that x1 minus i times x2 is equal to 0, or in other words, that x1 is equal to i times x2. And so I can write my first eigenvector that corresponds to the eigenvalue i as uh, 0 on the third entry, and now x2 can be whatever it likes, so I'm going to put a 1 into the x2 position, and then x1 is i times x2, so that x2 is 1, and this is just i. Okay. So I found my first eigenvectors i, 1, and 0. Okay, so far so good. Now I can also go ahead and whoops, um, and calculate the corresponding eigenvalue to the eigenvector to the eigenvalue minus i. So I'm going to subtract minus i on the diagonal. So um, uh, minus minus i is plus i, minus 1, 2, 1, again, minus minus i plus i, 0, 0, 0, 3 minus minus i, 3 plus i, equal to 0, 0, 0. Now I multiply by the, by the reciprocal of uh, i, which is minus i, right? because i squared is minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. This gets me 1 here. This gives me a plus i here and a minus 2i here. 0. Um, OK. Now let me just repeat 1i, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3 plus i. 0, all right. Uh, so I am going to subtract the first row from the second. The first row acts as the pivot, nothing changing. And here I get 0, 1 minus 1, i minus i, 0, minus minus 2i, plus 2i, and 0, minus 0, 0. Um, the third row, I'm going to just repeat at this point. Um, okay, fine, I can again uh, add the third, uh, the, excuse me, the second row to the first. I get one, i, and zero, zero. 
and then I can multiply by minus one half times the imaginary unit, which is going to give me two times one half is one, uh, times minus one, times minus one is minus one, times i squared is plus one again, so we got zero, zero, one, zero. And in the same fashion as uh, for the eigenvalue lambda equal to minus i, where I had three minus i standing here, now I have three plus i, so I find the reciprocal of three plus i by, by the complex conjugate in the numerator divided by the square of the absolute value in the denominator, and that is again 9 plus 1 or 10. And you can now convince yourself in longhand that this indeed will yield just a 1. And so again, I have from the last two rows that x3 is equal to 0, and from the first row I get that x1 plus i times x2 is equal to 0, or that x1 is equal to minus i times x2. And so I can construct my second eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda equal to minus i as 0 in the third entry. x2 can be whatever it likes, and then x1 has to be minus i times x2. That's the corresponding eigenvector for lambda equal to minus 1. Then it only remains to calculate the eigenvector for lambda equal to 3. So we have to solve the system of equations n for minus 3 times identity times a vector of 3 entries equals 0, 0, 0. Uh, actually, I hadn't written this out in longhand. Let me, let me do this here. Um, so this means for minus i, uh, solving the system of equations m4, minus minus i, so plus i times the identity, times a vector of three entries equals 0, 0, 0. Yeah. But that's of course what we did here, so um, that's not going to be good. Uh, this, is, this is conventional, there's no, no complex uh, operation going on here, so minus 3, minus 1, 2, 1 minus 3 is 0, 0, 0, 3 minus 3 is 0, and I have zeros on the right hand side. Okay, I can, um, what do I do? Let me multiply the second row here by, by 3, yeah? then I get minus 3 minus 1, 2, 0, 3 minus 9, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, okay, and then I add the first row to the second, and this gives me an unchanged first row, and um, 0 and minus 1 minus 9 is minus 10, and uh, 2 and 0 is 2, and 0 and 0 is 0. Here, now I can go ahead and uh, divide by minus 3, and this is going to give me um, 1. Uh, minus 1 by minus 3 is 1 third, and minus 2 third and 0. And I can divide the second row by minus 10, which is going to give me 0, 1, and minus two tenths or minus one fifth, zero, 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 zero. Very good. Then um, I um, multiply the second row by minus one third and add it. to the first, minus one third, sorry. Um, this is going to give me uh, an unchanged second row, of course, which serves as the pivot here. And the first row 
is uh, of course to be one here, zero, which was the, the goal of the operation. And now what do I have here? I have the I have minus two third um, plus negative one third times negative one fifth, right? This is what is going to come to stand here in the in the third position in the first row. Uh, this is minus two third uh, plus 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 minus minus. So this is all going to end up being positive, and this is of course one fifteenth, three times five. Um, so this is uh, minus ten fifteenth plus one fifteenth or minus nine fifteenth or minus three fifth. Okay, good. Minus three fifth zero. Zero, 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 zero. Third line does not contain any, any information. And so what do we get? We have that from the first row x1 minus 3 fifth x3 is equal to 0, or in other words, x1 equals 3 fifth x3. And the second row tells us x2 minus 1 fifth x3 is equal to 0, or in other words, x2 is equal to 1 fifth x3. And so I get my third eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 3, as x3 can be whatever it likes, so I'm writing it as a 1. And then the first one is 3 fifth times uh, 1, and the second one is 1 fifth. And this is my third eigenvector. Super. So now I can go ahead and construct my my matrix P for my eigenvalue decomposition. So P now contains my first eigenvector, which was I. 1 and 0, this was B1. My second eigenvector, which was minus I, 1 and 0, which was B2. And finally, my third eigenvector, which was 3 fifth, 1 fifth, and 1. And I need to find the inverse of this matrix, and that I do in the in the usual fashion, so I write my matrix to be inverted on the left hand side of my, my scheme here 1 fifth, 0, 0, 1. And on the, on the left hand side and on the right hand side, I have the identity matrix. And now I apply elementary row operations until I have uh, a, an identity matrix on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and multiply the first row by minus the imaginary unit. This is going to give us minus i square, which is plus 1. Um, minus minus is plus, and i squared is minus 1. And 3 fifth times minus i is minus 3 fifth i. And then I have on the right hand side 1 times minus i, this is minus i, 0, and 0. Okay, let me just copy the next lines. Now I'm going to subtract the the first row from the second. Okay, so the first row acts as pivot, nothing is going to change. And I have 1 minus 1, that's 0 as intended. 1 minus minus 1 is 2. 
and now I have uh, one fifth minus minus three fifth i, so that's plus three fifth i. I have uh, zero minus minus i, that is plus i. I have one and zero. And nothing changed in the in the third row. As a matter of fact, the third row is already in its in its final form as we want to have it. Okay, so obviously I'm dividing by two here, and I get one minus one minus three fifth i minus i zero zero in the first row. Nothing changed. The second row becomes zero one one tenth plus three tenth. I, uh, one half i, one half, and zero, and nothing changed in the third row. Okay. And now I add the second row to the first. So the second row acts as the pivot. Nothing is going to change in the second row. Nothing's going to change in the third. But in the first one, one plus zero is nothing. Uh, is one. Uh, minus one plus one is nothing. Um, and here I get minus three fifth um, minus three fifth i. Let's, let's just write this in the same thing. Minus three fifth i. This is uh, uh, minus six tenth. Um, minus three fifth i plus one tenth plus three tenth i, or one tenth minus three tenth i. Right? So I get one tenth minus three tenth i. Um, here I get minus i plus one half i. That's of course minus one half i. Here I get zero plus one half, that's of course one half. Zero plus zero is zero. So this is my this is the result of this operation. Okay. Now the in the end I only need to um, now I only need to subtract uh, I need to subtract one tenth minus three tenth i times the third row uh, from the first. Let me uh, let me write this out in this arrow format here. Um, one minus one tenth minus three tenth i. Okay. Uh, and that, of course, is going to give me one zero zero here. Uh, and now, what's going on here? Luckily, I have zeros here, so these guys don't change. And here, I just get minus one tenth minus minus plus three tenth i. In the same fashion, I now, let me erase this. In the same fashion, I now add minus one tenth plus three tenth i of or the the. the minus one tenth plus three tenth i the multiple of the third row to the second row and I get zero one and zero and again one half i one half and now minus one tenth minus three tenth i zero zero one zero zero one and I have found candidate for p inverse.
so it remains to check uh, that this is indeed correct. So let's uh, let's calculate the let's calculate the product p inverse p and check whether this is indeed the identity. So p inverse, as we have just found, minus one half i, one half minus one tenth plus three tenth i, one half i, one half minus one tenth minus three tenth i, zero zero one, multiplied by the original p matrix. I one zero minus I one zero three fifth one fifth and one. Okay. Um, now minus one half I times I is minus one half I squared is um, is one half plus one half times one is plus one half minus this complex number here times zero is just zero minus one half i times minus i is plus one half i square is minus one half plus one half times one is plus one half plus this complex number times zero is zero this out. Minus 3 tenth i plus 1 tenth plus this complex number times 1. This is minus 1 tenth plus 3 tenth i. Next row. 1 half i times i is minus one half plus one half plus complex number times zero. Next column. One half i times minus i is um, one half. Yeah, it's minus one half i square i square minus one is plus one half plus one half times one plus one half plus complex number times zero. And here again, uh, one half i times three fifth, this is three tenth i plus one half times one fifth, that's one tenth plus this complex number here times one, this is minus one tenth minus three. Finally, the last row, zero, zero, 001, times the first column is 0, times the second column is 0, times the third column is 1. Okay, now you've already seen it while I was writing here. Of course, these guys here cancel out, um, and these guys cancel out, so this is all 0, uh, minus 1 half plus 1 half is 0. Uh, minus one half plus one half is zero, and then I just have one half plus one half and here, and one half plus one half here, and of course, the result is one zero 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 one zero 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 one, and I have indeed found the identity matrix. So uh, we have therefore checked that this is indeed p inverse here, um, and we can now write our eigenvalue decomposition of the matrix. M4, which we remember was the matrix 0, minus 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3. Yeah? All real entries. There's no complex number in the matrix itself. However, the eigenvalue decomposition is P um, diagonal, P inverse is 
p we found to be 1, uh, excuse me, i 1 0 minus i 1 0 3 fifth 1 fifth 1 times the diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues and that was i minus i and 3 times p inverse which we found to be minus 1 half i 1 half minus 1 tenth plus 3 tenth i second row plus 1 half i one half minus one tenth minus three tenth i zero zero one and that's the eigenvalue decomposition for this matrix and we're done thanks for watching